well don't let the sun pot you off because it's really really cold still these lakes were all frozen just a few days ago and um, I've specifically come somewhere where I know I'm going to get bites hey, we're in the depths of winter now getting bites is the key if you're not getting bites you can't work things out so it's all about trying uh, a few different swims rotating swims and just talk you through how I'd approach a typical session on a lake I haven't fished for a long time and um, and when bites could be at a premium. I'm hopefully going to get lots of bites, um, but we're going to try and work out the best way to catch fish today and how to catch them better and hopefully catch slightly bigger fish if we're catching small fish. So that's the plan today. We're at Holly Farm anyway. It's a lovely little lake and um, I'm quite confident we're going to get some fish. Well, I've gone down uh, a pellet and a maggot route today. Um, if I could choose only one bait to use throughout winter, it would be red maggots. So I've always got some red maggots with me. There's a pint and a half, maybe two pints there, more than enough. I'm not expecting to probably feed half a pint, but if it's really good or I need to rev things up, then it's nice to have an extra pint on standby just in case, but nice big red maggots. Um, I also bring uh, dead red maggots. Um, sometimes being a bit more inert they're really really good um, if, they, if we start catching skimmers I'd rather catch on um, a dead maggot than a live maggot they just seem to hang on to them a little bit and the roach don't send, tend to go for them so so avidly so um, so one or two dead maggots can be really really good I've also got some dead pinkies um, rarely put one dead pinky on might put two or three on um, so dead pinkies are always a nice option I've got some live pinkies as well. It has to be really, really hard if I'm if I'm feeding and fishing with um, live pinkies, but they're good for putting on the hook. I might put a one red maggot and one pinky on as a as a little cocktail, or two or three pinkies. Rarely will I try and feed pinkies. It's a last resort, really. It has to be hard for me to be feeding pinkies. I want to catch on maggots, and in my experience, even in the depths of winter on commercial fisheries, the humble red maggot will still generally beat pinkies. Um, what you tend to find is the roach will intercept the pinkies before they get to the bottom and it's just not selective enough really. So, um, so we're, we're primarily after F1s, carp, quality silverfish and everything as well. So I've got some pellets, just normal two mil pellets, nicely soaked up. I've got some um, um, Sonobates um, uh, Pro Expanders, two mil and four mil there. Just a little bit of washed out base, bait booster on them. They're three days old, I've just kept them in the fridge they'll keep for several days like that if you keep them damp and in the fridge um, so they're nice they're a really good option especially if roach uh, are a problem or perch or whatever then pellets are definitely the way to go i try and catch on maggots it's my favorite way of catching but if i'm getting silvered out then um, then pellets is, is the way forward um, i've got some um, f1 dark ground bait i've mixed up way too much there half that would be ample um, I've mixed it on a damp side some F1 dark I've sieved it off a little bit just to get rid of any um, not through a fine flower sieve but the next size up just to get rid of any slightly bigger particles but that's nice and on a damp side as you can see I've mixed up some dead pinkies and dead maggots in there and I've also got a little mix of pellets and F1 dark as well so I might feed little nuggets I love feeding little nuggets like that of uh, micros and expanders um, micros and, um, and F1 Dark, but also a really good tactic for me, especially if skimmers or quality F1s or anything's about, just a little nugget, a little damp nugget with a few pinkies and a couple of dead maggots in, bomb it down and you can fish nice and positive, positively over the top, but you're not feeding loads of bait. So that's my favorite way of fishing. I might feed it loose if I need to create a cloud or bring some extra attraction in but little nuggets is my favorite way of catching when it's uh, like this but we'll see we've got a mixture of baits we can swap between we'll see what's best on the day i'm hoping it's maggots it might be pellets we'll just have to wait and see Well, I think it's important to have multiple swims plumbed up. Even if you're not going to fish them, you need places to go, places to try things. Put a little bit of distance between them as well. So I'm going to go short left and right and long left and right, basically. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but the lake's probably a foot down. 
and it's very very clear down the margins and very very shallow it's it's three and a half foot basically it's slightly deeper to my right than to my left i'd love it if it was the same flat depth everywhere um, but it, it's i've probably got about four inches in difference between my left and my right swims but that's fine we can still use the same rig and move it up and down to suit i've got no problem doing that at all if it was a bigger difference i'd have two separate rigs um, but i can use the same rig for left and right no problem um, so I'm going to fish because of the, the because of how shallow it is. We're in winter. It's the lake's down, and it, I can see I can see bricks just at the end of my keep net here. So, so that's how clear the lake is. I'm going to put a bit of distance between myself. I'd love to fish top kit in one, top kit in two, but I'm going to fish six sections left and six sections right. That's my short swim. I'm going to say what's that? Seven, eight meters, and then I'm going to fish 13 meters left and right as well. So two short swims, two long swims, and um, that should be fine. It's the same depth. My two left swims are the same depth, and my two right swims are the same depth, but it is about four inches difference between the two. And I'm going to mix and match it. So I have brought my big pot. I always set my big um, cupping kit up. You never know when you need it, uh, even for just collecting water or whatever. It can be useful. But I'm not expecting to use my big pot today. I'm going to do all my feeding with the medium flexi toss pot and also the smallest one. These only come out in winter. I put them away um, as soon as uh, middle, middle of spring arrives. These don't even get a look in, but I use, I use them in the winter um, for a tiny, tiny little nuggets of bait that are just wedging lovely there. So, um, and that might be enough each put in to, to keep these fish going. But I generally like to start on a medium flexi toss pot and um, I either put, leave them like that or I'll put the extender on with a hold if I'm starting to tap in pellets or maggots or things like that. But generally, just on its own. And that amount, a little nugget like that, I'm going to feed a little nugget of F1 dark with some dead pinkies and, and dead maggots in. Just one little nugget, just enough to fit in that medium pot. That's going to kick off my left hand swim. And then my right hand swim, I'm going to feed my 50-50 mix of ground bait and pellets. Again, same amount in a little medium toss pot and that's going to feed the right swim and that's all I'm going to do at the start I've plumbed up my two 13 meter swims I'm not going to feed them I think that's really important any fish you want to catch early you want them to come to you and I'm leaving all that nice nice and quiet past it and also it's quite blustery today so if the wind gets up and I'm suddenly struggling I'm going to say oh hang on I can't fish 13 meters why did I feed it so I'm going to fish eight sections to start with left and right see if I can get bites see if I can catch fish and then move out. If the wind gets really bad, then I might suddenly decide, okay, I can't fish 30 meters, I might fish 11 meters if I have to move further out. But there's no point fishing longer at the start. Always start short and work your way out. Give those fish, especially in winter, some, some space within your peg for them to back off to. If you go straight long, they can just go left and right out of your peg into your neighbor's peg. So I want them in my peg and I want them nice and happy. So, um, and plus by starting short, you can work out what's right before you go to 13 meters so i it might be a pellet day it might be a maggot day um depending on what happens short will dictate how i feed my long swims if i have to feed my long swims so let's pop the uh, cupping kit away or to one side and um i've got two rigs a 0.4 and a 0.2 rig a nice bulk down positive rig it's quite blustery and everything I'm going to start on the positive rig always start on your most positive rig um, so we're in control of the peg oh I'm going to start off with um, I always think pellets is the most instant bait so we're going to start off on pellets on the right hand swim just move that float up to uh, I've got a left and a right mark on my top kit so we'll pop a little four minute expander on just roll it on the hook just an 18 hook I like to fish a 16 soon as spring arrives, but this time of year an 18 is really, really good. It means I can fish a, a two mil or a four mil expander on the same hook or a maggot or pinky or whatever. So um, let's kick off. Now I'm gonna start with pellets to the right. So that's the swim I'm gonna feed first. Let's just take that pot off and put the medium one on, like I said. I've got no problem swapping pots throughout a session. I'm, I'm regularly swapping pots and putting lids on and things. Um, it's all about just trying to optimise what you're doing really. So uh, I've just wedged that in so it won't bounce out. Which 
so I don't hook myself. And I'm going to feed this to the right. Level with that, there's a bench opposite me. So just with the leg of that bench, I'm going to press it on the water. Tap, that's released, lovely. So whilst that's settling, you might see an odd little fizz and that come up. I'm going to feed the short left hand swim with my other option. So I'm going to feed that a nice little nugget with some dead maggots and pinkies in. There's quite a few in there. I want I want quite a few in to begin with. Sometimes feed a little bit more on that on that uh, maggot east swim, and that's going to go to the left level with that white little sprucey tree thing there. About there. Again, turn it over. Press it down. So you just go bump, nice and accurate. Right, so then I'm just going to quickly drop over. So we've given that ball um, time to settle and some fish to hopefully be on it. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a bite straight away. If there's any stockers about, they're on it straight away. It's not uncommon to go bang, 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 catch a few fish immediately, and then they, uh, then they shut up shop for a little bit once they've uh, realised that someone's fishing for them. But we'll see. It might take five minutes or it might take an hour, but quite often on these sort of venues, there we are, you can catch, oh, that was a little fish, don't know what that was. Might have just pricked that. Sometimes your very first looking as well, they might still be a little bit unsettled and darting around a little bit. So it's not uncommon to prick your first fish. Sometimes they're just not settled, but I'm not going to feed that again. Not till we know what's there. There was definitely a little fish on though. Could have been anything. Didn't feel particularly big. But we're right at the start of the session, so it's uh, it's not an issue if we uh, prick a fish early. There's still plenty of time for them to get on that feed. So we've got it dotted down to a pimple. Nice short four inch hook length, it's bouncing a little bit. There we are. Straight away. A little one. I've been told there's a lot of baby carp in here, but there's also some nice, nicer fish as well. Some nice big F1s and everything. Oh, a little mirror carp. He'll be nice in a few years, won't he? <laughs> Lovely. Don't mind catching those. Immaculate. Pop you in. So we will we'll, we'll top up this time. And I'm not going to leave it too long before I drop on the other line as well. What you sometimes find is they're slightly bigger fish on maggots than pellets. Um, the newer fish really home in. So I'm going to feed a little nugget. And then drop that straight down. So it's nice and wet and heavy. I don't want it to be too cloudy. I want it to just go straight down and break up pretty quick as well. I don't want one fish to eat it before it's foul, but I also don't want it to be a real hard ball on the bottom. So it's just about trying to squeeze it to the to the depth, and it's only a shallow shallow swim, so uh, we don't have to squeeze it too hard for it to get down in one piece. Oh, really windy. I was going to say, always choose a swim in the wind off your off your back in the winter. I always think the fish sit out of a cold wind, although it is sort of blowing all over the place today. But it's kind of off my off my back, mostly. And then I always go for the warm winds in the in the spring and summer. But this time of year, try to try and get out the wind if, if you can. And all I'm trying to do now is feed small amounts. And I'm just gauging the response every time I feed. If we don't get a bite from this, then we know to cut it back. Or if we do get a, re a response, we know we can carry on doing it. It's all about just trying to work out the, 
the volume you can feed to just keep to keep fish feeding and happy. If there's a load of little fish there, they might be clearing it out in no time. So even at this time of year, the, these fish are hungry. Ooh, tiny little fish again. There could be roach pecking at it. On these commercials, the roach can be as avid on the pellets as the um, as the carp. But we'll try and catch two or three more fish on this if we can. And then um, I think next time I feed this, I'll just feed pellets as well and see if that's better. I always think ground baits your attractor. It's a little bit of a lift. I think ground baits the attractor, but pellets sometimes keeps them a bit more settled on the bottom, just feeding pellets on their own. So we've got both options there as well. A bit of a lift. So there's a bit of activity down there. A few little dips and shakes and wobbles. We've just got to try and settle the fish down. Just work out the best way to catch them. If they're anything like the fish in my pond, they'll come to the bait, but not necessarily feed on it. So you will foul up a few fish because they'll just sit over it and sniff it. But as it gets later on, they'll get more and more active, I think, and more and more willing to feed. They are a little common carp that time. <laughs> so let's have a quick look on the, on the maggot line now and see what's settled on that first little ball we fed. Hopefully there's some fish there and hopefully a little bit bigger. But generally, fish get bigger the, uh, the later into the session you go anyway. It's always the little fish that tend to feed first. We just adjust that float three or four inches. Single dead maggot. And uh, what we'll do, we'll feed our pellet swim just with, I don't know, 20, 20, 30 micros. So it's ready and primed for when we drop back there. But I'm not going to feed the left hand swim, which I'm just about to fish. So we're going to feed and leave. There we are. So we've primed that swim ready and level with that tree. Straighten it all up and lower it down. Ideally, I'll just be able to feed those little nuggets all, all day. But it might, it might be a case of just dripping in maggots, just loose maggots. And uh, possibly getting the catapult out, but I tend to find, especially because it's quite blustery and it's that little bit further for throwing and it's an awkward distance for catapulting. I, I tend to try and stick to a pot. If they start coming thick and fast, then we'll start catapulting. I was about to say no signs, but then it's just buried. <laughs> Another little one. That's good, we're getting bites. And as long as these are about, you can keep feeding because you know they're going to start clearing up, up everything you're feeding. Another little mirror. Oh, he's had that a little bit further down. Just inside. Lovely. So we're getting bites, depth of winter. Easier said than done sometimes. We'll go straight back out without feeding. Try and catch another one, then we'll feed. I'm trying to lock the pole in against my legs because it is buffeting quite a bit. Windier than it, than it probably looks on camera. <laughs> The hood will be going up soon. But this is my nice positive rig, 
short hook length, four inch hook length, 010, 18 hook, number nine dropper, quite a big dropper shot, just to magnify everything. It's good for dead maggots, it's good for, um, it's good for expanders. And then I've got a nice light rig as well, with a strung out shot and a longer hook length if it's more of a maggoty day or a, an iffy day. This feels a bit better. They fought well, didn't they? So they're getting bigger, they're moving in the right direction and that was on the maggot swim. So uh, sometimes, you know, you could be catching the same number of fish as your neighbour, but fishing a different bait, you could double their weight. So that's what I'm always trying to do, improve the size of fish, catch faster and catch bigger. Well, it's about three and a half foot on all my swims today. So two short, compact rigs um, will cover everything, a light rig and a heavy rig. And by light and heavy, I'm just on about the weight of the float. The line, hook, hook length are all the same. Um, so starting at the top, oh, I'm using um, normal standard length um, top two kits. These are the top two match kits. I think at this time here in winter, you want plenty of elastic. Um, any sort of harsh movements and that you, the fish can come off if, if you haven't got enough elastic in your pole. So I don't mind if there's loads of elastic coming out. I want plenty of elastic come out so I don't bump fish. And you know, whether it's an ounce or a pound, I want them to stay on. So plenty of elastic in a long top two is the way to go. Eight to 10 slick, my old faithful, that's all I've used all winter pretty much. Uh, as soon as we get to spring, I'll, I'll go back up to t red 10 to 12, but green eight to 10 catches everything so um so that's what i've gone with and um main line is 016 and hook lengths are 010 it's a bit of a difference between 016 to 010 but i don't mind that because it's a nice um relatively stiff uh, material that's not going to tangle and i can still put a hook length 012 014 if i need to or even 016 to 016 but 016 main line is perfect for a commercial um, in the colder months so um, um i've got a so 010 hook length for pellets and dead maggots and when i'm fishing nice and positive on the bottom um, i like a nice short four inch hook length and if i'm fishing through the water with maggots primarily then I'd generally like a six inch hook length, a little bit longer. I might fish a little bit more over depth and a lot more little dinks that I can strike at. I just seem to find a six inch hook length is better for maggots and a four inch for dead maggots and, and pellets when you're fishing a bit more static. So um, my heavy rig is a 0.4 gram. It's all matched to the depth of the, of the water today. So it's only three and a half foot. So a 0.4 gram. It's quite a heavy float for that depth of water, but it's a nice sort of typical F1 slim sort of variety. Carbon stem, a one and a half mil hollow bristle, nice short compact float, nice slim profile. Carbon stem, unless it's really, really windy or towy, I tend to stick to a carbon stem, especially in this shallow water. It won't rock and wobble and, and wobble and, um, and won't um, uh, cause tangles or anything. One number 12 under the, under the stem, which just helps it cock just a little bit. I tend to like a number 12 straight under a carbon stem. 11's too much, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and, um, and then this is my 0.4 gram rig. So I've got a bulk, what's that, 10 inches away, a bulk of um, number eights. And uh, I think there's one number nine there as well. And originally I had a number nine just above the, the, the loop, but because um, the bites are very, very tentative and, and, um, and it is a shallow swim, I've actually took a number nine off and I've actually pulled it on the hook length so it's just below the two loops so it's that little bit nearer i can move it even closer if, if i want but that just get that little bit nearer when you're getting these little bites that aren't developing but you know the fish is there and holding on to it that's when you need to move that um, last dropper a little bit nearer just to magnify things so um, a bulk of eights and a number nine dropper really really positive rig and the other rig exactly the same 
uh, lines, hooks, everything. Um, but I've just got one, two, three, four, four number 10s and a number 12 under the float. So four number 10 strung out and a 6 inch hook length. And that is the same pattern of float, a nice F1 slim variety, a prototype float there, and um, it's 0.2 gram. So that's it. Oh, and because it's so blustery, really important, two number eight back shots. Um, and I'll move them up and down to suit, but about halfway is about right. And the length of line above the float, because it is quite blustery, um, just be mindful, start long, err on the long side, you can always trim it down later. And then I can just change the pots to suit because this is my strung out rig with um, strung out shot and, and fishing maggots and everything. I've gone with um, the flexi toss pot in the medium size with a hole. And um, if I'm just feeding pellets or little nuggets, then I just take the whole top half off and that's how I like it, just, just as it is. Um, but I like the extender and the lid with a hole. It's quicker to add, a, and, add and subtract anyway like that, but that's how I like it. If I'm potting in maggots or pellets or anything like that and sprinkling them in with the extender and take it off nuggets or, or um, just pellets on their own. So that's it. They're not huge fish, but they're noticeably a bigger stamp on the maggot. It's kind of what I expected and what I hoped. Whereas the pellet fish, there's a lot more of the little baby carp. But these are older fish. They seem to like the maggots. They seem to hang on to maggots nicely as well. So uh, you just get a better bite on a maggot, I tend to think. Already, um, I can't see myself putting the pinkies on. I could try them, but I don't think it'll be necessary. Um, so they can stay on the subs bench. But um, I don't mind that because pinkies last forever <laughs> in winter. They'll keep for a month, no problem. And, uh, and the dead pinkies you can keep three little batches, quarter of a pint ample. So uh, never feel like it's a bait that, you know, there's no harm in bringing because they do last forever pinkies especially when it's nice and cold like this so we've just fed that right hand swim I'm just trying to work out whether I need to feed and go straight on it or feed and leave it for a little bit see that's a small one again so uh, I think I need to feed a little ball and, and drop it straight on it. I think those bigger ones seem to be on it quickly. Bullying these little ones away. And I generally do change the maggot every chop still, out, out of habit. If you're not getting a bite, I don't want to think, oh, I wish I'd changed my hook bait. So I've popped the, little, the, the, the smallest pot on now and little hard marbles. There's just probably two or three maggots or pinkies in there. And that will just bomb down and we just follow it straight down. I'm not really laying the rig in sideways or anything with this rig. Flick it to one side and strain it all up and then bump straight down. On a nice calm day you'll be able to see all the little pin pricks coming off and you'll be able to lay it right on top of that ball but it's a little bit more a ripple today. But you can't get more accurate than just bombing a little bit down and, and trying to pop that bulk right on where it plopped in. There's a lift bite then. That's why I quite like that hook, that, um, that last dropper shot so close to the hook as well with this. Because you get these little lift bites. Have a little baby mirror. You might just get little waves of little baby fish. And then the... Uh, the better ones move in. But we're only fishing eight sections. There's eight sections, six sections, sorry. So we can uh, get in and out really quickly. 
it might be a case that we have to go long and fish 13 meters just to catch a consistently better stamp of fish. Even though we're getting loads of bites at this range, the better fish might be closer to that island. It's just out of pot well, it's probably 18, 19 meters over there, so too far to pole fish. Oops. Yeah, we've definitely got a little arrival of the babies again. <laughs> so let's have a swap over and fish the pellet swim and just see if there's been uh, an improvement in the size on that side. And we can always swap one to the other. If one's better than the other, if maggots is better, I'll make them both maggots. And we've still not been feeding any live maggots yet, so that's, that's another option as well that's definitely uh, on my mind. So we'll just pop... Just eating that rig up to my other mark. Take seconds to swap between the two. I'm not going to feed the pellet swim, but I'm going to feed my uh, my ground bait swim. I don't mind if it's a slightly bigger nugget sticking out of that pot. I just found it wedges in quite nicely still without bouncing out on the way out. I just touch it on the water. One little tap and it's out. That's it. Two taps then. <laughs> so straight over on that pellet swim. We fed it um, two fish ago. So not long. There's, there should be a, a fish waiting straight away. Yeah, a lift bite. Ooh. See that didn't settle then. I actually saw the shoulder of the float. It, but it settles instantly. Nice positive bulk, heavy float. Tiny little blink. There we go. Well, a better one than what we've just caught on the maggot. Even if it's, you know, a difference between a two ounce fish and a four ounce fish, it makes a difference uh, at the end of five hours. Not quite as big as us first thought. Nice little ghost F1, that one. We've had everything I can think of already. Goldfish, blonde F1s, mirrors, F1s. We've had a, even had a, I don't know, almost like an albino F1. So let's try a little nugget of ground bait straight on them. In the pot, just wedge it in. Don't press it in too hard. You want it to come out. You want it to stick to the pot long enough to get there. So it come out really quick once you're on the spot. Yeah. Feed first and then worry about the rig second. Well, it was lots and lots of small fish, lots and lots of bites, but I thought I'd go go long now, based on what I've learned, and, uh, and it's already paying dividends, slightly bigger fish. So yes, we are going a little bit further, but the fish are two or three times the size. I mean, that's a small one, but we've had a couple of nice big ones as well. So, uh, but they are bigger than what we were catching short. So it's all about just working it out. And I've also swapped to the strung out rig so I've had a couple of looks long, started off with my ground bait and maggots, but I just felt maybe I was bringing in too many small fish. Oh, I brought in a load of ducks then. <laughs> um, so I, I just thought I'm mixing it up now, but I am feeding maggots as well. Probably a, a generous sort of 20 odd in the, uh, in the medium pot with the lid on. I'm sort of clumping them down. And a single maggot on the light strung out rig. Sometimes those better fish, even though the rig's not getting in the peg so, so quickly and everything and so positively, sometimes just fishing through the water with a lighter rig.
can actually bring you a better stamp of fish. I'm sure I'll catch a tiny one now, but uh, it's, uh, it's just brought a little run of a uh, better fish. And that's what all I'm constantly trying to find is a, is, is a better stamp of fish. You know, if I was skimmer fishing, it'd be nice to, if you're catching 10 ounces, you want to catch 12 ounces or pound fish. So even that's slightly bigger than what we have been catching the last few fish short. So, oh, it's a little fat one as well. Got a little pot belly on like me. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes you might just find, because we're closer to the island over there, the, the bigger residents uh, might be sat over there. So, uh, but I'm not going to discount the short lines. I'm going to keep them. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to really fill that pot up, probably 40 odd maggots. A lot of maggots for winter, but I'm not going to feed one swim with it. I'm going to dunk the pot just to uh, make sure they don't spill. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to feed half the maggots, or sort of guess half, short. There we are. And then the rest of them are still in the pot to feed my long swim. So it's a nice little trick to be able to feed two swims as you ship out. It's added, what, two or three seconds to me shipping out time. But I've kept two swims on the go. I could pick up a catapult and catapult there as well. Ooh, the, oh, a roach. <laughs> See, that's the thing with the, uh, the strung out rig. Sometimes you'll catch fish that you didn't know were there with the positive rig. That might have been up on the drop. So that had it on the way down for sure. And that's another reason for not catapulting early doors. Because I do think if there are lots of roach about, you, uh, you bring even more in with the pitter patter from catapulting. So quick dunk, takes seconds to get out there. But I plumbed two long swims, but actually the way the session's gone, I don't think I need to feed two swims but I'd got I'd got two swims plumbed up but based on what I learned short I learned that I didn't need to have two long swims on the go I know if I do drop short there'll still be fish there so I've got a long swim and two short swims that's more than enough to keep rotating between lift little blink then it might be that every now and again oh a little goldfish um, they want a little bit of ground bait again each time I'm sure this one's got little black fins I think it is that. Ooh, that's an unusual one <laughs> a little koi. <laughs> a little black stripe on him. We'll call him Stripey. So what I'm going to do now, let's try two maggots. I'm not convinced it's going to be a double maggot day, but uh, I had a session at the weekend at Tunnel Barn Farm where the only thing I could get a bite on was two maggots if you, or a quality fish on. If you put a single on, you either didn't get a bite or you caught a roach, which is really strange. The better fish had to have a double bait. I'm not convinced that's the right going to be the case today, but we'll try it. Despite being a little bit more small fish proof, small I can't say it. Being a little bit more small fish proof might uh, just give it a little bit more time in the swim for a slightly bigger fish to to engulf it. So we might be waiting a little bit longer for bites, 
but there might be better fish. You've got to always weigh these sort of things up, really. I'm not convinced double maggot will be the key today. But it's, it's definitely worth a try for one or two drops. There we are. No bigger. But I'll quickly rule it out as well, you know. This, sessions like this are about quickly trying to establish catching patterns, ruling certain things out and, uh, and drawing good conclusions as well for future sessions. Hey, it actually isn't a bad fish. So that was on double maggot. We waited a little bit longer and it was certainly bigger than that little goldfish we just had. So uh, maybe we should try double maggot again. Well, I've come back short and I'm just dripping maggots now with an occasional nugget of ground bait and uh, waiting a little bit longer for a bite, but actually they've all been better fish. It's all relative. There's, there's still small left ones, but they're nice chunky ones. Oh, it's a lovely little handsome ghost F1 that. Single live maggot. But, you know, they're the fish you're after in this lake, I think. So uh, you keep them coming, that's when you do the weight. So uh, nice fish. Single red maggot, live maggot. So we'll swap between live and dead, but actually live maggots has been su surprisingly good the last, uh, the last half an hour. So probably just fish in, feed in sort of 15 to 20 maggots. Trying to clump them quite tightly. Just so some get to the bottom. Tap them in. And then I'm sort of clumping the, the rig down as well. I'm not really fishing it on a tight line or getting it to arc slowly or anything. I just want it to get down. If it was hard, I'd hold it nice and tight and let it arc through the swim. But I think it's a nice sort of positive day you know try and feed positively keep the fish on the bottom where they're a bit easier to catch i'm sure come spring you'd catch these shallow and it'd be brilliant but uh this time of year uh, especially in just three and a half foot of water just try and keep them on the bottom where they're a bit more settled and much much easier to control things So again, we just waited a little bit longer for the bite. But I think when it goes under, it's going to be a slightly better one. Please. <laughs> but I think next time I'll probably half the amount of maggots and just see if that's better. I don't think there's need to, f need to feed loads of maggots unless you have to. You might have given them a bit too much uh, choice there. It's probably the longest we've been without a bite. There you are. Ah, oh, it's a little one. <laughs> that goes the end of that pattern. Now, I'm not going to feed this time. I'm just going to drop straight back in. I think there's enough bait down there. we we'll just change that maggot. In fact, we'll put two on. We've had a few better fish on double maggot. I've not neglected that pellet swim. I've kept it topped up, not so often, but whenever uh, the chance arises, really I should have fed it then because I'd got an empty pot. So uh, it would have been a nice opportunity. But hey ho. It might be time of day, could be anything, but we're definitely having a nice little run of better fish now on a, a single live maggot. I think if you're not careful, you can put too much ground bait into the peg. So, uh, oh, this one's given up. <laughs> so uh, it's nice to just start dripping in some live maggots. 
and that's a nice end I think to the session nice chunky F1 cracking venue this if you just want bites then definitely come to Holly Farm I'm uh, really impressed in the depths of winter this is an absolute uh, breath of fresh air just to go somewhere and not quite know what the next fish will be it could be a goldfish could be all different shapes colors sizes we've had fantails we've even had a couple of roach but uh, probably seven or eight different varieties of carp and uh, a nice little curly fish to end on put your back well I thoroughly enjoyed that it's nice to be getting bites in the depths of winter didn't know what the next fish would be from lovely goldfish f1s mirrors commons fantails you name it we've caught them today and um, when you're getting bites it gives you lots of things to work at you can work things out and today maggots have been better than pellets ground weight's definitely been good um, swapping to live maggots later on has definitely brought a slightly better stamp of fish but a few swims batting between them and um, gives you loads and loads of options and it's just nice to be getting bites at this time of year especially when you little bonuses like that in the in the swim as well so uh but anyway don't forget to like and subscribe there's loads more videos on the matrix channel so get check it out if you haven't already and uh, i'll see you on another session